Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another playthrough, and I have bathed this room in red because your rage is going to be flowing, and I apologize for that. I promised Baldur's Gate 3 December, uh, and the reason for that is it's such a big game, so massive amongst our community, that I knew so many people wanted to play it, and therefore I would come in later on, uh, so we're not spoiling things for people who really want to dig into what is undoubtedly going to be a massive adventure and a massive journey, just like Terraria was. So let's get some rules laid down because you might be confused. In fact, in the first day, uh, we had a lot of new viewers here uh, on the stream and they were like, is this guy trolling? No. I do. There's a way I play these games. It's to say I do it with practically every single game that we play. No save scumming. We do not save scum. We deal with the consequences of our actions, which means if something goes wrong, then we go with it on occasion we will do things like okay i really want to find out what the outcome of this is because it seems hilarious but it's not something i want to actually do but we kind of want to see what it's going to do in that case we will reload a save but what we won't do is like oh i really want this to happen that didn't happen i'm going to reload the save and keep rolling the dice or whatever until i get the outcome that i actually want right that's not going to happen other rule is, I will attempt in most cases, in nearly all cases, to play as a good person. <laughs> I generally do roll as a barbarian. I love the big two-handers. I love squashing people and cutting heads off and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I will attempt, in most cases, to judge a situation and then decide what the outcome of that would be within the role play of it so as a barbarian yes i'm going to take an aggressive approach sometimes and that will have consequences as certainly again the rage is here uh but you'll get into it so without further ado let's begin our journey into baldur's gate 3 uh baldur's gate 3 so the character creation is phenomenal one of the best i've absolutely ever seen i, I could have messed around in this for hours and i've no doubt many people did probably spend hours and hours in here typically my character creation process is extremely quick i find it kind of fun but ultimately not that big of a deal to my enjoyment of the game as to what my character looks like in nearly all occasions only in stuff like world of warcraft where i'm like staring at my character all the time for like day in day out if i'm like hardcore playing a game you know 10 plus hours a day do i maybe get bored of my character after a little while and change it to something else but ultimately not too bothered generally we usually play a character that is somewhat reminiscent of my wife in some regards get the ginger hair going because she's a fiery and i love her and if i'm gonna look at something all day i would rather look at my wife uh but this time we went with a tiefling why it looked the coolest it was as simple as that it looked the coolest and kind of fit the barbarian vibe that i was going for so decided to rock a tiefling which <clears throat> was odd then i had to do something odd i had to make a guardian I didn't know what this was. I assumed this may have been my lover. That was my thought process here. Is this may be somebody who's a lover or somebody... Either my lover or it was going to be somebody who was like my squire in some regards. You know, who would be following me around and carrying my shit and all that. And in that, in that vein, we made the character the rat. Uh, here's my rat. <laughs> I made him into a rat just in case he did end up to be somebody who I'd be ordering and bossing around and all that. So I made my rat uh, and then I realized usually one thing I really enjoy about playing RPGs, certainly the old ones, is I get to voice act a lot of them and uh, sort of flex my muscles. I'm not great at it, but I like to try. I uh, certainly enjoyed that in FF14, but this was all narrated, and the narration in this game is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I, I would dread to see the script for this game. It must be tomes upon tomes upon tomes of digital fucking records of this thing. Uh, so the game. Your head drops and your skin tingles. Visions rush past a dragon swing, a silver sword and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Uh, so the game kicked off and I met our first couple of characters, Lazy and Shadowheart, kind of an edgy name, uh, by uh, being a barbarian and ripping the door off her capsule and saving her. Uh, and then I met Asterion, uh, who I really didn't like at, uh, initially because he looked clammy and wet. <laughs> he looked moist to the touch and cold. Uh, and, uh, I get, I definitely saw in the chat is like people were like heart throbbing this and I don't know, man, this, this gave me a full on Jedward vibe. Uh, and I was like, nah, I'm not digging this, but I like the posh voice that came into, uh, then it was time to get back to the gameplay for context. I have played all of divinity original sin two. Uh, so, but there's a lot of rules. It was a long time we've called who played that and remembering all the little intricacies of the game is, uh, something that takes a, a good 
probably a good 40 hours to get used to, especially with D&D rules. And just, honestly, it's a testament to how flexible the game is. There are so many options for how you deal with certain events that coming out of the bubble of like standard single player or linear games and even MMOs that are based on a very strict set of rules and don't like you breaking those boundaries, uh, it can be a little awkward sometimes for me to adjust to that uh, style of thing. But got my first real proper combat, which is going into a tomb and meeting a, a weird character called Withers and defeating some enemies around him. But uh, Withers uh, turns out to be somebody you're supposed to find. This is a story element. He comes back to the camp with you uh, and he enables you to like res people and eventually summon people in case you kill everybody in your party and you want some temporary NPCs. Um, I then met somebody called Gale out on the road and Gale struck me as odd straight away. But then going back to the camp, it's revealed to me that Gale is, uh, for want of a better word, a crack addict. And I don't want that in and around my guys. And he wants me to feed him loot, which I don't want to do either. So he was definitely on the outs with me <laughs> from the very get-go. I was not particularly interested in Gale uh, being around and doing stuff. I didn't really want that to happen. Fortunately enough, in the very, like, 10 minutes after that, there was a moment where Gale was, like, trying to convince me that his addiction was a good thing and blah, 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 blah. I told Gale to screw off and Gale's gone. And this was day one. Uh, and I was, I became very apparent of how quickly and easily I could maybe ruin my followers. But to be sure, yes, I know some people got annoyed about, like, hey, you're going to miss out on hours and hours of story. I'm fine with that. I'm definitely going to play this game again offline. This is going to be my at-home game. Now we're back in the studio. So I will be playing it again, like, with a more... Uh, with an approach to see everything. But for my first playthrough, I wanted to experience it as I feel at the time without manipulating it to try and get the best outcome. So I'm totally fine with this happening. I didn't like Gale. I didn't want Gale around. So go away. Go away. I next headed off to the Grove, uh, where we met some people, and this is where he disappeared. Uh, met Will, which was a warlock, and got told to go and rescue some guy called Halson. Uh, but then on the way out, I met a dog. Um, I was really excited by this, because I was hoping the dog would come back to the camp. And the dog was looking after a dead body on the floor. And so I, I, I used my animal speaking to speak to the dog, find out what was going on. I was scared, I was terrified. I did my absolute best to calm the dog down. And unfortunately, the dog, even though it got to the point where I had to prove, uh, uh, my option was show the dog that the guy is dead so the dog isn't like tied to this guy anymore. Um, and so I did that, but that angered the dog. And the dog is dead now because I'm a barbarian and we deal with our consequences in this playthrough and i didn't realize at the time because i'm playing blind i know nothing about this game at all i avoided everything for months that this is apparently a big deal uh and i believe now that the dog could have been like a follower he can help you in combat and blah 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 and um yeah and we're playing on tactician difficulty um so the dog's dead. So you're gonna have to make peace with it. I I, I didn't want it to happen. I know what I'm not I'm not trolling. I know I'm smiling because I know the reaction that a lot of people have to this, but I really didn't want that to happen. I genuinely was like, okay, show the dog the guy's dead, and then the dog could be free. Engage your rage. <laughs> Engage your rage. Uh but it gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse. So as I was <laughs> As I was mooching around these ridiculously dense maps like the Baldur's Gate 3 maps and I'm only on map one are so dense there's content every 20 feet that's like a whole new thing that you're going to spend like two hours dealing with uh, I ended up in a cave with an owlbear mother and again I put on my animal speaking and I steadily approached the owlbear because there was loot on the other side of the owlbear that I wanted to get and I made peace with the owlbear I made peace but the owlbear didn't see it that way. I really tried to make peace with this owlbear. I really did. Um, and I ended up getting into combat with the owlbear mother and the owlbear cub. I'm not soup. I, I mean, it's not that I'm not proud of it. It's just that it was hilarious. 
I was really curious, uh, once I started to relearn the mechanics of D&D games and all these options that the game gives you, because it's such a versatile, amazingly fun game. I did throw the, 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 the owlbear cub at the mother. Can I throw the baby at the mommy? I love this game. That's so stupid. <laughs> when I say it out loud, it sounds bad, but it was really funny that you could do that in the game, and the game allows you to do that, which is cool. But at this point, I was definitely starting to notice that uh, I was getting annoyed with how the, the action bars worked um, because... They're like all interchangeable and stuff like that. So I decided then to make custom ones so I could make it a bit more like an MMO style uh, because I want my buffs over here. I want my DPS spells over here. I want my hybrid spells over here. I want my concentration spells over here. So I set them all back up as much as I wanted to do them to get my bars in a nicer way. And then it was back to camp was the next major event of the day where I went to sleep and Asterion decides he's going to bite me in my sleep, and he is a vampire. And now, my initial impression of him being an Edward Cullen character and looking like a clammy, wet fish, uh, all played out. My dude's a vampire. I'm fine with that. There was a lot of, like, discussion as to the morality and emotional impact of this moment. I'm fine with it, as long as he doesn't bite me. I don't care if he bites people. I, I, he says he goes and bites animals or whatever. Like, I'm fine with it. I'm totally okay with it. So, Asterion gets to stay. Uh, especially as I want my party makeup, generally what I'm looking for in a game like this is me as a barb, I usually like a ranger, uh, some hunter style character, which is what Asterion's going to be, and then I usually like a healer, uh, so I've got Shadowheart as a cleric, and then I like a DPS caster, uh, which is a little awkward because Gale was that. <laughs> Gale's gone now. Uh, Gale's gone now, which is why Will is a warlock. I'm enjoying a little bit. Uh, the thing is, I know you can respec at Withers. And uh, very, Divinity used to have it on a mirror. You could go to the mirror and you could just change whatever you wanted. In this one, you go to Withers and you pay a little bit of gold and they'll change your class and all the options with it. And in this one, um, compared to what I'm used to, you don't individually get to put your points in the various stats. It does that automatically. I assume that's to control the difficulty curve as much as possible because there is a limited amount of experience you can get in the game. So it really does help Larian... Uh, figure out like how powerful you probably should be by certain points because there are limitations on how far you can go and how much customization you have uh, with your characters. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with Warlock though. Um, it, it's okay. It, it's all right. Uh, my Barb is my fun one. That's what I like. I might go double melee. Hard to decide, but uh, we'll get what we'll 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 get there. Uh, then my next thing that I did is I wanted to explore more. This again, this dense, dense map, and I found a village that was being absolutely raided by goblins. And again, in true awesome fashion, it's like I made peace with the goblins, so I could walk around in the town. I was like, yeah, I'm I'm scary because I'm a barbarian. I like scared them to death, so I go in there. And then I bumped into some ogres who were like could talk and stuff, uh, and I managed to convince them to join my team. And I thought it was really cool. They gave me a horn to summon them. So for any really scary boss fights, I could get the ogres out uh, and do that. And that's sick. And the final, that, that was awesome. Like that kind of moment. And uh, you always wonder, and this is why a second playthrough, a third or a fourth is even so important. Uh, and I say that as, um, I want to give some context to this. There, there are some people who've been watching me play this who have completed this game like four or five times and have like probably a thousand plus hours in it. And I'm uncovering things they just didn't know about. Uh, mainly because I play in a, a more abstract way than most people. Like, certainly as a streamer, a lot of streamers like to play for the best possible outcomes. To see all the stories, to get every little element. On my first playthrough, I'm going to play as a barbarian. And I'm going to treat these people as I feel about them. I don't like you, Gale. You can go away. Uh, that's, you know, that kind of approach is how I will always play my first playthrough without manipulating the outcome. Uh, so I'm doing a lot of things that people didn't realize. And, and in this process of getting the ogres, I then found an underground hidden laboratory, which then led to like a weird spider cave. And I was working through the spider cave and encountered the spider broodmother. I'm pretty sure I've hit the point where I'm underleveled. Or there's gimmicks, because... <laughs> Again, these D&D &D rules are going to catch me out, at least for the first probably 50, 60 hours of this game. 
uh, is there's m ways of doing things that seemingly, if, if a fight, I guess the message is, it's kind of Dark Souls style. If a fight seems really goddamn hard, you're missing something. So I wasn't killing it, even taking up various positions and trying to outplay it tactically. Uh, so having a little exploration, I found some boots that allow me to walk on webbing without being ensnared. And then I found out that webs are very susceptible to fire, meaning that if I can do something on the webbing with the fire, then I can bring this thing down. So that is my next order of operations. And that was my first uh, sort of 10 hours in the game and the main highlights of what was going on. As always, you can check the VODs if you want to see the playthrough like in full. Uh, but obviously we understand a lot of people don't have the time for that. So that's where I'm up to now. My next stop is probably to kill the spider or try something else and maybe get a little bit more experience, a little bit more playtime before I come back to it. But we'll see where we go. So that's where we're up to right now, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, everybody.